All right, everybody, I'm doing yet another follow-up to the Brad's Life uh, analysis that we did about coming down, becoming a trader uh, that is a stock trader, living in Nicaragua, and all the things that make sense for that. We did a full video on that a couple days ago. Yesterday, I did a follow-up uh, where I talked about um, just, just talking about some of the comments that people had made, and then there was another comment that I feel I need to follow up on because I think it's a little bit dangerous, and that is uh, one of the comments was, if he's going to have that amount of money, which is between fifty and $80,000 uh, U.S., of savings coming to Nicaragua, uh, the person who was commenting said, that's enough money, he should take that and use it uh, as a nest egg because he can live off of it for a long time. He has enough money to start a business in Nicaragua. And absolutely, he could easily start a business in Nicaragua, no question whatsoever. He could also start a business in the United States. Like, that's a lot of money you can start a business, right? Anybody who's doing what he's doing could potentially start a business. So uh, the thing was, is that um, a lot of the comments about becoming a stock trader are very much like, that's just gambling and that's just, you know, this totally reckless thing. So it's important to understand. First of all, if you're going to gamble professionally, that's not this incredibly reckless thing. Gambling is risky, of course, but professional gamblers do make money. It's You just have to be professional at it. The people who lose money mostly at gambling are people who are doing it casually. They're not paying attention to the stats. They're not looking at who's winning and losing, and they're playing, trying to play against the house. The house is always going to win, but within the pool of people who gamble, there are people who win a lot, and I've had entire companies, not that I worked for, well, sort of, that uh, when I first started the company that I have, our partner company was funded by the gambling winnings of their owner and not like a one-time windfall he just got lucky no he went every week and played and averaged making about $35,000 every time he went to the casino so he would do that every time he moved past Atlantic City going to and from the office and he won just outrageous sums of money he flew a personal helicopter everything was funded by his gambling now he didn't gamble with money he didn't have to lose he was doing it smart he owned a business that he did before he became a professional gambler but using the money he got from that he then invested it into his gambling career and made enough money to start extra businesses funded from that, including his personal helicopter. So it's not that gambling on its own, when treated professionally as a job and treated intelligently, can't make money. It's that playing against the house can't. But it, so on one hand, people have a tendency to be like, the lottery, I could be a billionaire. No, you can't. But on the other hand, they tend to be like, all gambling is just throwing money away. Also, not necessarily true. Now, we often talk about stock trading as being like gambling, and in many ways it is. However, unlike gambling, there isn't a house that is guaranteed to make a profit other than the margins on trades. Of course, there's a little bit of guaranteed overhead, uh, but you're in a market where you're investing, especially when you're talking stocks, and that means that there is actually a rising tide. You're investing into something that creates something, there's actually an average winner. So it's very different than gambling, where the house is guaranteed to have a large margin, and then you're simply playing against the other people. And some people are going to win, some people are going to lose, but overall, everyone's losing. In investing, overall, everyone's winning. The margins going to the house are incredibly small. They still a lot of money, right? Investment banks still make a bit doing trades for you, but it's just not the same. The average person can actually win. The average, it, it definitely does win. Right now, not by huge amounts. You're still you're very risky. It's very volatile. But if you know what you're doing, people who do blind trades or just random casual trades generally lose. They're the highest risk. Those who are day trading, those who are focused on it and are full time, that's what they do. And they're studying the market and they're making really quick moment to moment decisions. That's where you generally win. Now, people who are really good can win a lot. People who are just really diligent can win a small amount, but it ends up being much like a job. You're basically self-employed and it can make money. So the so first of all, there's this reaction, this emotional like, one, a lot of people dislike people who trade and gamble professionally because it feels like they're getting money for doing nothing. They're actually putting in a very hard job with a lot of time involved in most cases. It's just a job like any other in that way with some volatility, but everything has volatility. Uh, it does actually hedge against some volatility. You can't just be fired, right? You can't get just an emotional boss who doesn't like you one day and decides that they don't need you anymore, or they don't like who you are and they want someone else to do your job, or the company goes out of business because they've changed direction or whatever, right? You don't have to worry about those things when you're a day trader. You control a lot of those things. It actually provides a lot of safety that other things do not. So I think that people are reacting in a very odd way uh, to him wanting to be a trader. I think it's actually, uh, if he knows what he's doing, if he's doing his due diligence, it's probably a really sensible path. He needs to understand that it's a hard job and there will be bad days and good days, but if he's doing it uh, in a smart way, then it is a smart decision. And you could say that about anything. If you're doing something foolishly, then it's a foolish decision regardless of how sensible it is otherwise, right? Now, 
the thing that I really want to address in this video is the idea that he should invest this in his own business. Now, of course, if he was going to do that, if he had a really, really solid business plan, right, then opening a business in the United States has a 15% chance of success if he knows what he's doing, if he's experienced. There's a lot of things. You wouldn't generally recommend someone do that. You Just as a rule, you don't recommend that people go into business because the average person going into business who intends to go into business will fail by a wide margin. It's not like, oh, 51% fail, but 49% make it, and it's pretty much half and half. No, 85% fail, 15% make it. That means you are expected to lose whatever you're putting into it, both your time and your money. You'll learn from it, like you'll be a better person, sure, but you could say the same thing about going to work at McDonald's or just, you know, doing anything. Everything makes you a better person if you allow yourself to grow from your experiences. So that you go out and lose a business is not the necessary path to that that you want to take intentionally. So if he was going to start a business in the United States where he has knowledge of the market, has the least possible overhead, has access to family resources, friends, uh, just awareness of the culture, knows where there's gaps in the market, knows how to do it, has the least overhead to doing so, has all the legal mechanisms to make it the best, has the ability to work there himself, all these things. That would be a crazy recommendation to any person who doesn't have a pre-existing really amazing business plan. You have to have solid idea of why you're going into business. You have to know exactly how you're going to be competitive with other people. You have to know exactly how you're going to beat the market and do better than everyone else. And you still will likely fail, even if you do all those things. But without those things, you're guaranteed to fail. And the U.S. is possibly the greatest market for starting your own business in the world. No place has less overhead or much less overhead. Nowhere is has a bigger market to sell to. Like You have more advantages in the U.S. as an American than basically anyone in the world has anywhere. This is like the perfect scenario for if you want to be your own business person. And even there, the average person will fail. And it's, it's very, very tough. And if you're coming in with no experience, we're assuming Brad has no experience. Maybe he does, but we're assuming he has no experience. We know he's got no business plan or he'd already have done this stuff, right? So that doesn't exist. Then the recommendation is not to do that thing, which is a best case scenario for, for wanting to be an entrepreneur, but to do it in Nicaragua. No business plan, no right to work in the local market. That doesn't mean he can't start a business. You absolutely can. But it means he can't be an employee of that business. He can potentially manage it, but he can't be an employee. That's a whole bunch of risk that he wouldn't have if he was starting a business in the United States uh, or some potential other markets, but specifically the US. Uh, he does not have a business plan, nor is he culturally accustomed to Nicaragua. He doesn't even have the first guess, we assume, being an American who doesn't know a lot about Nicaragua. He doesn't have anything to base a solid business plan off of. And considering that expats who live here for years have experienced starting businesses other places still generally fail because it is such a difficult market and they have such a, a backheel position compared to Nicaraguans. A Nicaraguan who has a solid business plan can go to any expat and raise funds to start a business. Like that's easy, right? Businesses are small. Expats are constantly looking to invest. There's all these reasons to do it. And, and it's easy if someone has a solid business plan to come and be like, look, I know how this market works. I know all these things. I have these family connections. I have the friends connections. I have the government connections. I know how to do all the things. I know who to get the licenses from. I know how to get the permissions. I know who, who wants to buy my product. I'm going to do this thing. They have so much advantage over an American, you have to be a hundred times better than you would have to be in the United States. And still your average fails, but your average in Nicaragua is going to fail so much harder. It is so hard to succeed in the Nicaraguan market. And even if you are going to succeed, to be able to live off of that. So we always say as an expat, if you're going to invest in Nicaragua, the first rule is be patient. Make sure you have that business plan. Make sure you get to know the market years to do these things. And two, make sure that you don't need to live off of it. And that's where the big mistake here is. A huge risk is this is the, instead of doing a solid job and trading is different than starting a business because it's more like a job. It's more like being self-employed. It's all about your personal hustle, not about going out and finding customers. You don't have to sell to anyone. You don't have to make a product. You don't have to manage employees. None of that exists in being a day trader. So it's not like starting a business. You don't have that, that huge failure rate. Starting a business is the highest gamble that he could do. And starting it in Nicaragua is about the highest risk within that high risk thing he could do, right? It's just, it's taking the risk. He, so as a trader, his chances of success are probably above 
They may not be great chances, but they're above 50%. And his failure is probably not that risky. Like, oh, you, you lost some money as a trader? It doesn't mean you went out of business and went bankrupt. Normally, it means that you put in $50,000 and you're only able to take out 48. That sucks. That's a terrible situation. But it really rarely involves you losing everything. Sure, 1929, a lot of people lost everything. It happens. But the chances that you're going to be in a position where everything is lost, all your hedges are lost, all your stocks are lost, everything goes to zero, there's almost no risk of that. But if you start your own business with that money, the risks of that are so high that it's expected. And if it's uh, if you're doing that in Nicaragua, it's so high that it's mind-blowing if anything but that happens. It's essentially guaranteed. So we don't want to pull him away from a very low risk, a very smart uh, means of supporting himself and his family, or at least starting to, and then he can change direction as, as he gains experience. And we don't want to push him to starting a business in the U.S. That would be outrageously risky. But then we don't want to push him even further to starting a business in Nicaragua. It's for all intents and purposes, it is the same as setting all of his money on fire. The chances that he will know what business makes sense, the chances that he will be able to hire without anything going wrong, the chances that he'll be able to do all those things without having gone through several steps of, of having failed businesses or successful ones previously, there's no way. This is the hardest market. And the person who said this, of course, is like, you know, he plans on doing this. One, I, I think he's got solid income. He's already got money. Two, he said it's a hobby. He hopes someday it'll make money. Okay, he has to be understanding the chances that it'll make money, basically zero. But as long as it's a hobby and it's fun and you're doing it for pleasure, great. And you also have to understand that the majority of people, the vast majority of people who are expats, who are in Nicaragua, who are doing investments, are doing it because they want to get investment residency. Investment residency is one, it allows you to bypass some other things. And two, it gives you like longer periods of time and simpler paperwork once you go through this really hard step of investing. And so some people want to do that. Very, very few. But of the people who invest, most of them are also going for investment residency, which makes a lot of sense. And that's what I'm doing. And so I think it makes sense for me, but it's still a close thing. I don't need to do it. I could do income-based residency. That's also an option for me, but the investment one is open to me and it is nicer if you can get it. And so I want to get that, whatever. But Brad doesn't need that. He's getting marriage residency. In theory, he has a fiance who's Nicaraguan. Why would he want to go through any of those processes? Because as long as he's married to a Nicaraguan, his residency is the strongest. He doesn't have any of that paperwork. It's so much easier. It's so much faster, so much more automatic. He doesn't have to do all the work and he doesn't have to put up a risky investment in order to go for it, nor does he have to show all these solid incomes and stuff. He has the best case scenario for that. So all of the reasons that would go behind doing an investment, that it's just something you're passionate about and you're going to do it whether you lose money or not, that you don't need to live on it, that you're not doing it in a country you don't know, that you're not doing it when new to a country, that you're not doing your first business, that you are that you have a solid business plan ahead of time that you're passionate about, that you've done all the math and you know it's going to make sense and that you have reasons why you're already ahead of everyone else in the market. He didn't have a single factor that makes it considerable to start his own business in the U.S., let alone in Nicaragua. So the amount of, I, I think that's a really dangerous thing. And I, I know he's not considering that, but for anyone who's, who's watching these videos or reading these comments, I want to be really clear that, yeah, I love the idea of starting your own business. I'm an entrepreneur. I've been an entrepreneur basically my entire adult life. I started my first business when I was 19. The one I currently have, I started when I was 22. I've worked for, my, for myself my entire life for all intents and purposes. I had planned on starting my own business when I was 16, so I even had years of planning before actually doing it. I love being an entrepreneur. I can't imagine not being an entrepreneur because it's defined who I am uh, as a person, but I still would not, even with the experience I have, with, with 27 years of having been in business for myself, 25 of those being successful years uh, for having products, for having an existing company behind me, I still would never consider doing what's being recommended, right? Starting a business in Nicaragua with all of my nest egg with the idea that I would live off of it. I love investing in Nicaragua because I'm helping create jobs. That's important because I love being entrepreneurial. That's important to me. I'm passionate about it. I'm starting businesses that I'm passionate about and I'm doing them without a need to make money off of them. I would love if they didn't lose money. I want to be able to have those businesses. They make me happy to have. There's all these things that come together that make sense for me, but none of them match what's going on in this scenario. If I was in his position, it would be absolutely, even with my experience here, even with, you know, all the people I know and the businesses I have connections to and all those things, it would be outrageously reckless for me to take my nest egg and put it into a new business here in Nicaragua, even with all my, because I got business plans here, right? 
it would be crazy for me to do that and hope to be able to live off of it someday. And it's important to understand that if he's going to start a business here, he's going to use a lot of that nest egg and not then be able to live off of it. You can do one or the other. You can't do both. And so, yeah, maybe he's got $80,000. And yes, that may allow him to live for, let's say, eight years. Really, really lean. But he could get eight years living off of that. And if he invested it, like, in the U.S. in just a normal index fund, yeah, he could get even more out of it. But if he's uh, going to put that into actually starting a business here, chances are all of that's going to be eaten up by the business very quickly. It depends on what the business is, but we have no idea. Without a business plan, this is all just crazy talk. But if we were to put that into a business, then he can't live off of it. He needs that business to be able to feed him. But chances are, like most businesses, he'll have to feed into it for years, not take out of it for years. The average business, even in America, once you establish it, you still need to have a revenue stream to keep putting money into it for the first however long, year, two years, sometimes 20 years, to get it to a point where it's going to start generating a real revenue for you. And it, for him, it needs to not just generate enough for him to live off of, but enough, I'm sorry, not just enough to be profitable, but it needs to get to a point where he can live off of it. And if it doesn't do that, he can't use that as his income source. He's going to have to find a job. And we're right back to being a day trader. But wait, he doesn't have the nest egg to use for the investments to be a day trader. He's giving that up. So starting a business, unless it's just, you know, shipping things in from the U.S. and selling them out of his house and has absolutely no overhead, which is not going to do anything because if you could make money doing that, everyone would do it, obviously, uh, right? If you are a Nicaraguan and you have a business plan where all you have to do is spend no money, you maybe you need a few hundred dollars, maybe even a few thousand dollars, and you have a solid business plan that's going to make enough money to live off of, you're going to come to someone like me and be like, Scott, I need a little bit of money to start up this. So look how solid this business plan is. We don't have to invest very much, but I don't have this little bit of money. I'd be like, we're done. Like, here's the money. Let's do this, right? Let's do this 10 different times, and, and we'll make a little bit for me. We'll have a huge profitable thing, right? No one has that because the moment it existed, it would arbitrage out of existence. And so the, he's not going to find that. So by trying to start up a business, he will guarantee for all intents and purposes, it is impossible to not burn his nest egg and give up his ability to start a business in the US and his ability to become a day trader. And he will give up his time and be focused because you have to, to make a business work. He will put all of his time into that business, which he's not passionate about. He's not, he hasn't come up with this, right? If you, if you haven't come up with your own business idea, you're never going to be passionate enough to go do stuff, right? You're, you, that's not how it works. And so it's a really, really dangerous path. And, and this is something that I try to teach all the time. It's fine to want to start your own business. I want to start my own businesses. I love starting businesses. And you have to be in a position where you're not trying to live off of those businesses or you're going to be so desperate and so risky and so just you're going to get steamrolled. And, and especially in a place like Nicaragua where all it takes is one tiny little misstep and you have no idea what you've done wrong and maybe you don't have access to the market. Maybe you didn't get a license that you need. Maybe you didn't file your taxes properly because you didn't have the right accountant. Maybe it takes you months or years to find the right team and you're burning through resources because you don't know the right people to go to. And it's a word of mouth market for people who live here. It's so easy to find people because they already know people before they would start a business. But for an outsider, they're starting from scratch. They don't even know how to get introduced to those people yet and how do you get into a position to get introduced to them if you don't already have a business like it's really complicated so all those things are additional barriers it's just it's so much risk please brad don't consider starting a business until you have so much money that you're doing it for fun and you could just throw the money away and that's that's where the real gamble is 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 starting a business nothing is riskier literally it's like playing the lotto right Chances are you're going to lose whatever you put into it. And if you make anything, chances are it's not that much. Thanks for joining me, everybody. Uh, as always, if you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Miller. I'm talking extra fast on today's episode because I'm doing this and three other episodes that I'll have to upload before I walk out the door, taking my kids to Managua to celebrate my daughter's birthday. She already had her birthday. She loves going, both of my kids love going to Managua and just going out to eat, going shopping, doing the city stuff. They're city kids. They like the big city. Uh, so we're going to be hanging out in Managua for a few days. Hopefully I'll get a chance to record a little bit of something for you guys while I'm there. And uh, hopefully I'll manage to get this uploaded at some point as well so you can see it. I'll see you all on the next episode.